I didn't have as many negative reviews in 2022, so we'll go with the five worst and a guilty pleasure pick. Like I said in the best of 2022 video, which you should check out if you haven't seen it, there are lots of movies that I missed in 2022. Probably more bad ones than good ones, as I am much more selective about my time. I tend to watch things that I gravitate more towards now so than I don't, so it's less likely that I will see movies I don't like. I'm hoping that can change in the future years, not seeing more movies I don't like, but seeing more movies in general. But in the meantime, here are the top five worst movies of 2022 that I saw and my guilty pleasure pick of the year because I think dishonorable mentions aren't as interesting because why not just make a longer list. Number five, The Woman King. This may be a controversial rating, but this movie should be more so itself, I think. Honestly, the film is overlong and a bit of a slog. It's one of those where the marketing hyped it up as this action epic, and it's really not. A lot of the action was just in the trailer. Now, the battle scenes are pretty phenomenally staged, especially the big one at the end. There's one or two that come across as awkward and way too overcut, but the film has wonderful performances and it looks great. I was entertained when the big portions hit, such as the battle scenes, but I found myself often bored and asking, what's happening? As several scenes for character moments would come and go, they often felt like they could have been cut for time or they repeated themselves. The character work is decent, but it gets lost in these long stretches where my wife and I just zoned out. It comes together in a stronger third act with that big battle I mentioned, but that's again too long, but gains that exciting appeal that left me near ready to leave a positive review. However, I was too bored to do so, and the attempt to make heroes out of people who, who arguably were not is a little problematic and made me uncomfortable. I'm surprised that actually didn't cause more of an uproar. I'd personally have to do a deep dive into this history to really know for sure, as it's apparently debatable. And as I finished the film, I found myself at a crossroads with a flawed, but mostly well-made movie with riveting yet inconsistent action and severe pacing issues and a questionable story. I'm open to revisiting and learning more about the history here, but the fact that there's so much debate and the argument I read in favor of the film wasn't as convincing as some of the historical things I've seen elsewhere. Knowing that these things were changed makes me question it and I can't decide either way, but just on the merits of the movie, I found it pretty disappointing. Number four, Thor, Love and Thunder. Ugh. The one I wanted to love. The more I think about it, the worse it gets, which is sad. It's probably the worst MCU film. It feels like a collection of great scenes hidden behind an SNL farce of a skit. Pretty disappointing might be putting it lightly because there's a lot of individual moments that I loved and a lot that I didn't. The insults to the mythos remain from Ragnarok, but it knew when to quit. And the humor in this one goes into stupid territory, even if I did laugh the other half of the time. Ragnarok had moments that went too far, but it remembered to balance itself the majority of the time and the humor then worked, mostly. More of that goofy isn't the right call. Christian Bale is awesome, but under utilized every bit of potential here is nearly thrown out the window despite a ballsy finale status quo paradigm shift for thor and his world the serious moments hit really well and it makes me wish they had really honed in on the dramatic elements instead they decide to make thor into a walking meme with constant grating humor that just does not land does not work the film is super imbalanced the visuals are imbalanced it comes across as written by an angry 12 year old and I think Taika Waititi is better than that. But then they have to go and get me excited with that post credit scene. Cue my silent frustration. Number three, Catwoman Hunted. This is one of those that I doubt people talked about a lot, but when formulating this video, I actually originally forgot this movie existed. And that should tell you all you need to know. The cat without the bat just ain't all that. It's got a sense of fun with the jazz music and anime music, which can be jarring, and the animation is pretty slick. But it's far too coy with its innuendo, and then it's outright sexualized for no needed reason other than literal fan service. An all too common trope, how anime of them. The plot feels very directionless with constant one-liners and limping through scenes to each action sequence without an ounce of anything meaningful behind being shallow and predictable. I had fun with some of the action, character cameos, and occasional banter, but I was on my phone for over half of it. I just don't understand how it was so boring for 80% of the runtime, and then so adult for real no discernible reason afterwards. Number two. Hocus Pocus 2. I just saw the first Hocus Pocus for the first time last year, a day before this one actually. My wife and many people around me love it. It was okay, but extremely overrated and protected by nostalgia. But even my wife didn't like Hocus Pocus 2. 
It was just bad. Full of modernisms to make it more relevant, the familial 90s adventure and wonder elements are replaced by eye-rolling teenage stereotypes that are completely void of any real development. Casual jokes about Satanism abound and Christians are made to look like complete buffoons. Puritans are high school mascots, and the jock representing the Puritans is a complete idiot. It's grating, redundant, and I wish more people were less okay with it. Don't get me started on the worst green screen I've seen in probably a decade, and the whole movie is just not funny and not enjoyable, save for one or two special moments. I said what I said. Number one. The worst movie of 2022 is Halloween Ends. When writing this video, I didn't envision this as the worst movie of 2022. It was one or two down the list. But after some consideration, well, let's just say, in the promise of my motto, the general quality of the production, and especially the final powerful moving 15 minutes of Halloween Ends, save it from being a total dumpster fire. But it is still a trash sequel, which I say rarely. I won't spoil it, but what on earth were they thinking that's the end of this franchise or this continuity i should say it's it's an embarrassment a travesty of creative decisions that barely qualifies as a halloween movie i am truly baffled and was perplexed for the entire narrative in the end halloween ends is a confusing bad movie with good production techniques and quality, yet writing that just misses the mark completely even though it's disguised as this layered, subjective look into serial killers and how people can change. But as I feared, this entire trilogy feels largely aimless and pointless in retrospect. Like, I'm still not sure how this happened, but that's my pick for the worst movie of 2022. And now for my guilty pleasure pick. Let's just say it's Morbid Time. Morbius, I may be the dishonorable mention of for this, but I have to give it to Morbius because is it flawed? Yeah, absolutely. Messy, holy, bland, at times, forgettable, definitely, but not maybe not due to the hashtag Morbius sweep controversy and all the internet doing its thing. Man, the memes about this. But does this deserve three stars? For me, it gets by on the skin of its teeth. There are objective qualities to film, but the entertainment factor is subjective. Don't let anyone tell you it's objectively bad. It's exceptionally average, studio cash-in, formulaic, but I had fun. Make your own opinions to each their own. Always look for the good. Even if the CGI is the most CGI looking CGI to ever CGI. There are other movies I enjoyed less that still fall on the positive side of things, but I figured this one was the closest in line to the term of guilty pleasure because I had a lot of fun with it and there's moments I really loved and a lot of it I don't remember. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my best of video and remember we have more coming soon and please subscribe if you haven't. Like this video and remember, always look for the good.